Greetings, cyber dogs and citizens of the interwebs. This is Ren Diggity Dog coming at you in another Minecraft episode for Rom, the Hermitcraft server. Welcome back, my fellow Ren Troopers, to the Valley of Tattoo Ren, where my primary objectives for the last week have been to dry up rivers around our squid farm and to dig a giant freaking hole in the ground. Last episode, of course, we received the blueprints for a TIE Fighter advance from the Emperor of the Renpire. And today, our goal is to get that bad boy built in the pit. Because I don't know about you guys, but I certainly don't want to get on the bad side of that crazy old man. If he wants me to make a spaceship, I'll make a stupid spaceship. Oh, and speaking of squid juice, I'm pleased to report that the oil rig we built in the last episode is working beautifully. Especially after I spent a bunch of time this week clearing all the surrounding river biomes of water source to improve the spawning rates of squid in our brand new ink factory. We're now churning out ink sackages like nobody's business, my dudes, and we should, in theory, have all the resources we need today to build the TIE Fighter. Although, we do need to kick off today's episode with some proper resource gathering before we can start that build. And most importantly, we need to find a way to generate over 2,300 grey concrete blocks today. The good news is though, we've got quite a few redstone geniuses on this server, one of which is Mumbo Jumbo, who has designed a really nifty and efficient AFK concrete maker that even a redstone noob like me should be able to put together. So I tell you what, let's kick off today's episode with another redstone project, shall we? Let's try build Mumbo's wondrous TNT concrete maker contraption of awesomeness. <laughs> that is hopefully going to help us generate all the concrete we'll need for our TIE Fighter project today. Now, I've got big plans for this concrete maker because we're going to be making good use of it when we start working on our mega base, which is going to require an insane amount of grey concrete. But for now, we're just going to build a working model of the thing here on the cliff side of our Tattoo Rain base. But worry not, my aesthetically minded friends. Even though this concrete contraption is going to look rather ugly today, we're going to eventually transform this thing into an amazing Star Wars inspired build. Namely, an absolutely massive Jawa desert crawler that is going to loom over the valley below and supply us with all the concrete that we need. But that project is going to have to wait for another episode, my dudes, because today we've got a TIE Fighter to make for the Emperor. And boom, baby, that is all the redstone now installed for the mumbo jumbo concrete making contraption of awesomeness. Although, I'm a bit worried because I've not managed to test this thing out on vanilla just yet, guys. And as we are using a TNT duper for this thing, we might still blow the whole thing up. Also, big brains on Randog, I have no concrete right now to actually see if this thing works. So let's pop over to the shopping district, pick ourselves up some sand, some gravel, and let's try and make some concrete without blowing up our brand new machine. Well, 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 what do we have over here, my friends? It looks like the mayoral race on the server is starting to pick up steam. And good times with Scar coming in hot with a brand new, uh, I guess, billboard just outside of the commercial district. I mean, I don't really know what it is. It's Scar's head dangling from a balloon with a vote sign above it attached to a little island. Um, yeah, only on the Hermacroft server. Oh, and by the way, my fellow Bigger Logs Incorporated employees, we made a stack and a half of diamonds from log sales this week. Stonks, baby! Oh my goodness, there are literally billboards for mayors wherever you look in the shopping district right now, guys. It's absolutely amazing. I cannot wait to see how this whole mayor thing plays out on the server. It's going to be super fun. Uh, anyway, we've got some shopping to do, my friends. We need to get ourselves two shulker boxes worth of grey concrete powder and a shulker box worth of cyan terracotta. Now, cyan terracotta is pretty annoying to make because we've got to make cyan dye, which is kind of expensive, but luckily... False Symmetry has a beautiful terracotta shop here inside of the skull of this massive dinosaur head, I think. Got to do some parkour to get in there, though. So, here we go. Boom. Terracotta. One diamond per stack. Ooh, that's actually a pretty good deal, my friends. And I definitely don't feel like spending a bunch of time making cyan terracotta today. So, hopefully, Falsy's got some stock for us. Let's have a look. Oh, baby. 
Well, it's not quite a shulker box, but it's a very good start. Thank you, Falsy. Next up on the shopping list is sand and gravel for gray concrete. And I do believe that Green has recently upgraded his barge. And I'm hoping there is a bunch of sweet, sweet materials in there. We've got Mumbo for Mayor all over the show too, but let's pop our head in here. This is looking very nice indeed. Wow. A great upgrade to the barge. And, well, yep, yeah, we got some gravel over here. One diamond for two stacks. And we got sand on this side. Let's have a look. Do we have a lot of sand? Oh, baby! Well, thank goodness we made some diamonds from logs this week, guys. Because I've pretty much blown most of it on sand and gravel from Grian's barge. And while we're out here in the shopping district, there is some business that I'd like to attend to that you guys have been telling me about in the comments for the last couple of weeks now. And that is a subscription to the Hermit Herald. This is an absolutely amazing project that is being run by Cleo and Cub Fan. And basically, in a nutshell, we have our very own newspaper on the Hermitcraft server. It's called the Hermit and Herald, and it's on volume four right now, which is pretty amazing. And what Cleo and Cub do is every week they update a map art with the news that's been going on in the previous week. Here we can see the past editions of the Herald, and I gotta say, it is pretty amazing how much information Cleo and Cub are able to to ram into a single map art every single week. I mean, we're literally looking at a map right here, guys. So every single block you see, including the shadows of the letters, have been placed by uh, Cleo and Cub. Really amazing work, and I definitely want to subscribe here. And I think the way that this works is we pay one diamond for the Herald, and then it will be updated every single week. What the heck was that? Whoa, what the freak is going on? Oh, hi, Grian. Oh my goodness, the campaigning never ends! Anywho, so let's subscribe to the Hermits and Herald, shall we, guys? Completely distracted by that very aggressive and very effective bit of marketing from the Mumbo Jumbo campaign manager, Grian. And speaking of the Hermits and Herald, it looks like they have just set up a mayoral polling station just outside of City Hall over here. Very, very cool. This is not the actual voting for mayor on the server, I guess. This is just a way to gauge how well the candidates are doing in their campaigns. And I gotta tell you guys, I have no idea who to vote for. Every single one of these hermits would make an absolutely amazing mayor, in my opinion. I'm kind of leaning towards Falsy right now because she did such an amazing job on her vote for mayor poster. Plus, we managed to get a bunch of cyan terracotta from her shop today. And that's definitely worth a vote, in my opinion. I kind of think we probably need to throw one in for Mumbo too because there is a Grian floating around with a trident and, well, message one was received. Just a few more resources to gather for all that grey concrete, guys, starting with some white dye, which we can very easily get from our beautiful bone meal farm here at the Quadra Chopper. And finally, of course, a bunch of black ink, which we've managed to generate quite nicely here in our Tattoo Rain oil rig. Oh man, it's concrete making time, baby! And with all of those beautiful resources now gathered, we can make a ridiculous amount of grey concrete powder. And I've also used a bunch of sand that I got from the big dig where we're going to be building the TIE Fighter. So absolutely not worried about running out of grey concrete today, guys. What I am worried about, though, is whether this concrete machine is going to work. Because if there's one bit of redstone out of place, the entire thing is going to go kaplooey. Hold your paws for me, cyberdogs. Well, my fellow rain troopers, the moment of truth is upon us. Can we get Mumbo Jumbo's concrete making contraption to work first time around without blowing itself up? That really is the question for the ages. Let's test out the duper, shall we? We got to get the uh, clock ticking over. That's looking good. Everything's looking good. Now, when we hit this button, we are going to start the production of TNT, so to speak. So let's do a bit of this and let's hope that it works and... Um, it's not working right now. Oh my goodness, dudes, this is so dangerous. Mostly because I literally have no idea what I'm doing. I just followed Mumbu's tutorial, built the machine, and now I'm trying to figure out why it's not working. I think it's got something to do with the slime blocks. I just moved these two slime blocks one back, and hopefully when we extend it now, that should pull that slime block back, which should trigger the TNT. So let's turn the clock on once again, and hopefully it's going to work. And okay, third time's a charm, and this time we're going to literally stick our hand into the engine. This is probably a terrible idea, but as soon as we get the TNT duping, we never have to mess with the system again. So I'm going to try and put the TNT there, and that hasn't worked. 
well, kind of worked. Did it work? Sometime later and after watching Mumbo's tutorial about three or four more times, I think I know what is wrong here, guys. My heart rate has returned back to normal and basically what it comes down to is I set up the slime incorrectly. We gotta do it this way, stick the TNT in front of the fan, then we hit the lever and that will prime the system. Okay, so now with the TNT in the correct position, in theory, we should be able to turn on our farm by flicking this lever and yes, it sounds like it's working. Let's have a very quick flyby over here and let's have a look. Yes, it's working. Now, oh, Iskar would be so proud of me right now, guys. We've literally created a mini monstrosity, but instead of cutting down trees, we're cutting down concrete. Well, with all that redstone derpage out the way, there's only one more thing to test here, guys, and that is the actual production mechanism of the contraption. Now, this thing works in a very interesting way. We've got a zero tick piston over here, which is going to trigger every single time we put a bit of concrete powder in front of it. Now, when it triggers, it's gonna push that concrete powder in that direction. And as the concrete powder goes past the water source, it will turn to solid concrete. And when the solid concrete enters these blocks over here, the redstone signal will go through the comparators, through the concrete block and into this redstone and that's going to trigger these pistons to push that concrete down toward the water tank down there. Now when the concrete reaches a certain height downwards it will get blown up by the TNT and that is how this thing farms concrete. Pretty awesome right? Well let's give it a test guys. There's no better time than the present. Oh Come on, baby. There we go. Okay, so you can see the concrete coming out of the dropper. That's going to keep the concrete in our inventory, which means we can just sit here and AFK concrete farm for however long it takes to get the concrete. Now, while we blast away through two shulker boxes of concrete powder, I just wanted to take a moment to say how incredibly happy I am to see how many of you guys out there are enjoying my Hermacraft series so far. Man, we've been experimenting with lots of new editing techniques and video formats and whatnot, and even though it's pretty scary for me as a creator to try all these weird and wonderful things, it really inspires me to keep going when I read through the comments of my videos, which honestly, guys, are just so amazingly crammed with positivity that it sometimes overwhelms the heck out of me. I'm not gonna lie. And yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is thank you everybody out there for all the incredible love and support for my series so far. It really does mean the world to me, guys. So I've been digging in, dogs. I've got to be honest with you right now. I am so incredibly happy with that concrete maker. Oh my goodness. It took about 15 minutes to make two full shulker boxes worth of grey concrete blocks. And considering I spent the entire of season 6 manually mining tens of thousands of concrete blocks, this thing is literally my new favourite redstone contraption. Thanks for the tutorial, Mumbo. In other fantastic news from the Valley of Tatty Ren, the time has finally come to get ourselves into the giant pit and oh my goodness guys do we have a lot of work to do down here today we're going to build a tie fighter inside here and over the next few episodes we're going to work on the walls because they're not looking too great at the moment okay so that's enough dilly dallying my dudes let's get down to some freaking business here in the pit shall we we have literally thousands of blocks to place today and the sooner we get started the sooner i can get this video edited and out to you guys Ah yes, now that's looking a lot better already, my dudes. The floor of our Tattoo Ren hangar bay no longer looks like a giant janktastic hole in the ground. Although we are going to have to do something about lighting this place up because it does have a massive surface area for mob spawnage at night. I think we can probably make good use of sea lanterns and iron trap doors to install some futuristic looking light features into the floor, right? And we've got to make sure that they're not too distracting and that they're going to match the style of this build too. So tell you what give me a couple of minutes to experiment here and let's see what we can come up with well cyber dogs it is approaching midnight here for the rain diggity dog in real life and i've been working on this pit for the entire evening Honestly, I wasn't very happy with the lighting that I did a couple of hours ago, so I've been back to the drawing board and I've been trying to figure out a better design for this. And I gotta say, man, isn't the Valley of Tatty Ren looking absolutely amazing from here on top of Stray's Monsters Castle? Oh, so cool, man. Uh, anyway, take a look at this. I'm probably gonna go to bed in a couple of minutes, but before I do, let me show you some of the work that I have done here for the lighting. And I think this is way better than what I showed you guys in the 
the last segment. This definitely looks more, I guess, space station-y, right? It looks more like a hangar. It looks like somewhere a spaceship could land. That's the center of it. It's kind of like a target. And these lines over here are going to be, I guess, roads into other hangar bays that are inside of the pits or something like that. I mean, when I look at this, I get inspired and also I get super nervous because next up, we're making a TIE Fighter, and that's probably going to take a ridiculous amount of time. So I'll tell you what, my dudes, I'm going to get myself to bed for today. I'm, uh, oh, man, I'm feeling a little bit sleepy. We'll, uh, we'll see you guys again in the morning. <sighs> you have done well so far to follow the instructions of your Emperor, Stargazer. Your work has not gone unnoticed in the Empire. My promise to bring Pamela back to you remains unchanged. But first, you must prove yourself worthy, man. <clears throat> Your next objective is to secure a position for us in the upcoming elections on this planet. Do whatever it takes, Stargazer. In the name of the Renpire, man. Ah, uh, nothing quite like the sweet smell of progress in the morning. Am I right, my fellow Minecrafters? Man, this TIE Fighter is coming together rather nicely here in the hangar bay. Just managed to finish off the two wings, so we basically have half a TIE Fighter, and I still need to do the body, which is actually going to be the most difficult part of this build. The wings are fairly easy to make because they're exactly the same, so once you've made one, it's pretty easy to make the other, but if anything, what this build is showing us is how massive this project is going to be. This hangar bay, it's not just a hole in the ground, it's pretty much a mega build isn't it and it really is starting to look so so cool and you know what i think this is a very important project for the value of tatu ren because when this thing is done it really is gonna say this is the star wars corner of the hermitcraft server right anyway still a bunch of work for me to do on this thing my dudes so let me get back into grind mode and let's see if we can get this sucker built now, of all the weird and wonderful things we've made on this server so far, my fellow rain troopers, this TIE Fighter has probably caused me the most amount of pain and pleasure, all at the same freaking time. It is definitely the most expensive project we've worked on so far when it comes to resources, and the deeper we go, the more I realize that we're going to need a lot more factory infrastructure here in Tatu Ren in order to fully realize the mega base vision of the Emperor. But even though this week's project has been a challenge to put together, it has been an absolute joy to finally see it taking shape here in the valley. I think we can all agree Season 7 has been a wild ride so far, but honestly for me, I don't feel like we've quite found our lane in the season just yet, right? It's all been a bit all over the place, I'm sure you guys will agree. But with this Tatu Ren Hangar Bay build, I'm really starting to feel like we finally found our spot in the season. And I just cannot wait to transform this valley with you guys into something really special and unique. The likes of which Hermitcraft has never seen before. I guess what I'm saying is, I'm super hyped with the direction we're going guys, and I hope you're enjoying it too. Well, it's taken a few days for me to notice, my dudes, but I just realized that the door of our Tatu Ren hut has been snapped out of existence. What the heck is going on on this server at the moment, man? It's just absolute madness all over the place. Oh, jeez. Anyway, welcome back, guys, to the Valley of Tatu Ren and to the big reveal. Are you guys ready to see the TIE Fighter in all of its glory? Oh man, this thing is so sweet. It's been one heck of a grind this week, guys. I gotta tell you, it's also super hot in England right now. I am cooking alive. I'm sweating in places I'm not supposed to be sweating. But take a look at that. Oh baby. It is looking absolutely amazing. I still need to do the interior though, but for that I'm going to need a bunch of beacons, which I don't actually have at the moment. But for now, we finished off the shell of this bad boy. It's looking incredible. Hold on, this block is bothering me. We need to get rid of this nonsense over here, right? Get out of my life, you stupid white block. But feast your eyeballs on this sucker, my friends. I am so very pleased with this build. It has certainly been one of the biggest challenges that I've faced in Season 7 so far. Mostly because of the symmetry, you know? When you put something like this together, it's a spaceship, it's a 
piece of engineering. It needs to be perfect. Every block needs to be in the right position or else it kind of loses the effect of it being a sort of a realistic build. And I think we've done just that. I mean, it's as perfectly symmetrical as I could make. And it's looking fantastic inside of the hangar bay here. And you know what I always find crazy about a build like this, guys? From a distance, it just looks like a little toy, right? Look at that. You could almost pick it up and throw it across the room, pretend that it can fly, right? But yeah, the scale of this thing is obviously massive, but from all the way up here, look how huge it is. It absolutely dwarfs the oil rig here in the valley, and it's looking amazing. I really love what it looks like when you fly over this area now. I mean, any hermit coming through the Valley of Tatu Ren, they know what's up now, don't they? There is a TIE fighter waiting in a pit, and oh baby, does it look mean as all heck, my dudes. Jeez. And it's got to be said, my dudes, this was an incredibly challenging build for me as a Minecrafter. I mean, not only did I have to try and design this thing in creative from scratch, but then to translate it into vanilla Minecraft, oh man, it has really been an amazing challenge. And I'm so very happy with how it's turned out. It's looking so sweet. Look at this thing. Although the hangar is looking absolutely terrible. So that's going to be next on the agenda. Make the hangar awesome. But unfortunately, my dudes, I've just checked my watch and we've run out of time in today's episode. I've got to get editing. I've got so much work to do. Guys, thank you so very much for watching the episode. And listen, if you did enjoy it, you know what to do. You smack the like button the like a nobody's business. If you haven't subscribed yet, well... The Valley of Tatu Ren, it's just starting. It's getting, it's going to be amazing out here. We've got plans coming out the wazoo. It's going to be beautiful. Hit the freaking subscribe button. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Ren Diggity Dog and the TIE Fighter signing out. We'll smell you all in the next episode.